this out. It's time for We're circling it up, so the best of our crew. Giving teams what they need in the name it's of a self. Taking gumbo. heed to needs from teams who read, fulfilling our dream with journalistic it's speed. Come on, the magazine, make your teams read. 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 Come on, the magazine. To the visual, to further reach your brain of every teenage individual. Gumbo. Keep you updated on hot stars and performances, real life issues and stories that's informative. Gumbo. All the info you need at the press of a button. The show when you're feeding just to know something. Gumbo. Cover world topics plus the hot picks live. Get your finger off the channel button it's and then watch this. We're serving it up with some of the best of our crew. Giving teens what they need in the name it's of a self. Taking Gumbo. heed to needs for teens who read, fulfilling our dreams with journalistic it's speed. Gumbo. 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 Hi, we're kicking off our second season of Gumbo Television, the only entertainment news show made by teens for teens. Today, in Feature Story, we'll go to the flashy red carpet for a film premiere about a serious subject, life in the ghettos. Next, we'll talk to one of the members of the 2002 United States World Cup soccer team. Following In Critique, we explore the facets of a new high-tech sport called geocaching. Last in Express Yourself, we showcase a group of talented teens who present their creativity through unique media. So, so stay live to GTV. GTV. Our Milwaukee Brewers take on the hard-hitting Cincinnati Reds. The Brewers play here tonight at 6 on UPN 24. Gene Roddenberry's Andromeda. Take one, speed. We pick up the story of Gene Roddenberry's Andromeda. Basically, we see Dylan Hunt in command of the Andromeda Ascendant at the height of the system's commonwealth, the civilization that he is pledged to protect. And then we see some very, very bad things happen to the system's commonwealth and to Dylan and to his crew and to his ship. Battle stations! He's the captain. He's the captain of the uh, starship Andromeda Ascendant. Crew comes first, the ship comes first. Anybody tries to screw with that, they're in trouble. Let's rock. I think Andromeda is exciting. It's unpredictable. Fascinating. No! It is Star Trek meets Matrix. It's got sci-fi, it's got wicked toys. It's something completely different. It's a rock and space adventure. Saturday at 5 on UPN 24. If people watch the John Walsh talk show, they'll know how they can make a difference. Talk means more from a man of action. I think he's inspiring. He really fills you with hope. The John Walsh Show. Weekdays at noon on UPN 24. Welcome back. Has a child ever been murdered in your neighborhood? Do you wonder where your next meal is coming from, or if you will even be alive tomorrow? Two teens from the south side of Chicago did, and they shared their story with the world. Their experience is portrayed in a newly released movie, Our America. In Feature Story, we take you to the red carpet for this film premiere. Drugs. Gangs. Lack of education. Poverty. These are just few of the many problems faced by many youth today, such as here in South Chicago. So what's being done about it? Well, in 1993, two African-American teens, Lee Allen Jones and Lloyd Newman, became reporters for National Public Radio and did a documentary. It was called Ghetto Life 101. All oh, America, life in the hood. Project living ain't always good. NPR producer David Ivey searched for a sound portrait of what life is really like living in the south side of Chicago. I like to think of it as a sound portrait of the ghetto. 
Ghetto Life 101. This is Dave from Radio. Yeah, make sure you get him shot at, man. Let him see the real deal. He found what he was looking for in two young boys, Lee Allen Jones and Lloyd Newman. Journey through my life. There's lots of ways for kids to get in trouble here. And you know it all at a real young age. I ain't gonna be alive in 10 years. This ain't nobody gonna be alive in 10 years. The community had its doubts. Can children from these kinds of homes be expected to resist pressure from a white adult to say what he wants them to say? We can't back off because a few people want to circle the wagons and pretend there's not a problem in the inner city. I can sue them! I got right! Someone wanted to make sure that they portrayed the most negative stereotypes of African-American life. Then 18 months later, a 10 and 11 year old boy took young Eric Morris up 14 flights and dropped him to his death. When tragedy hits home, together Lee Allen and Lloyd set out to find the truth. It's a national story. It happened to all neighborhood. Who can tell better than us? I want to know why you want to do this. I owe it to Lee Allen and Lloyd. I, I don't want to talk about that. Please, ma'am. Find sources, get people to talk. I hear you guys are doing a piece on that little boy that got thrown out the window. Tell us about that. Two boys they said did the killer. They was upstairs all the time. Ten-year-old boys out all night by themselves. They need help. And they ain't gonna get that in prison. Hey, you've done something. Be proud of it. We went to the movie premiere in Chicago, and I was able to speak with the real Lee Allen Jones and Lloyd Newman. What is the message that you want the youth today to get out, out of the movie? Dream the impossible dream and, you know, reach for the stars and you won't come up with a handful of dirt. You that anything is possible, you know, through life, no matter what you go through, everybody going through this, there's always somebody worse off than you. All you got to do is try hard and want to succeed, and you will. What kind of message did you want to get around, across to your audiences making this film? Well, I hope that the movie um, shows that no matter where you're from, you can realize your dreams. You know, Lee Allen and Lloyd, especially Lloyd, came from some pretty rough circumstances growing up, and... Um, Still, he was able to focus in on his dream and realize his dream. What will come out of this film that you hope will get across to teens and all types of minorities and all types of people? What do you hope will come out of it? Well, I hope that more and more teens will look at uh, Lloyd and Lee Allen and uh, look at them as uh, heroes and role models. No matter how hard life is or seems to be, if you have a dream, you can realize that dream and don't give up on it. These young men were born in circumstances that, that many young people are, many human beings are, and they're not the, sometimes not the best, but they've survived them. And I think that's the lesson that we, you know, can take away from it, that you do not have to be and should not be defined by your circumstances of birth, and you can rise above them. I think there's a lot of problems that face you today, but I, I would think the most important thing that you probably should have is just love in their life and people to talk to and share things with and communicate. It was a real nice movie and it really showed how you could get out of a situation that you really think that you couldn't get out of. You could do something about a problem that you have or are facing. Yeah, it does make you think sometimes because it's not every day that black kids get a chance to do something like that. And so happen they just got to be the ones to do it. So it's an inspiring movie. I mean, before I seen the movie, I I never thought to do nothing like that. But after seeing the movie, you you probably be like, well, since they did it, I know I could do it. So you want to go out and find something that they won't put on the news because they really don't talk about when black kids get murdered too much on the news. So that, that make you feel like, well, since they did it, I know I can do it. So I'm going to go out and try to make a report of this. Thanks, Arthurine. That really gives us a look into what life in the ghettos is truly like. If you'd like more information, visit npr.org and search for Ghetto Life Revisited. When we come back, I'll meet up with professional soccer player Tony Sane about his achievements at the 2002 World Cup. I'm Ernest Dickerson, and this is GTV. Down by the riverside, a hanky panky said a bullfrog jump from bank to bank. That at our meeting. That's absolutely don't ridiculous. Cry. Don't 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 c
It's the best time of the day. We're free! Return to your games and fun. It's recess. Weekdays at 8 on UPN 24. UPN Monday. Mom may be running the show, but Magic Johnson's stealing it. You are my favorite football player. The Parkers. Then, how do you handle an ex that won't let go? Who died? Apparently your bachelorhood. One on one. And on Girlfriends, how did a night of fun end up like this? Stay away from Joan. Master B guest off. Then on another Girlfriend. Mama! Can you have too much mother? Are you sleeping without a bra? Monday at 7 on UPN 24. I'm gonna kill Dee Dee and become the only child I was meant to be. Two half sisters with one problem. Hello. Each other. You're gonna need me around for I don't know legal advice, moral support, help with those clothes. Half and half. Premiere September 23rd on UPN 24. Seventy show starts September 16th on UPN 24. Hi, and welcome back to GTV. Soccer is the most popular sport in the world, but the United States, it still struggles to gain equal coverage as the more entrenched sports. This year in soccer, the United States did far better than in many past years. Every sport has its Michael Jordan, and right now in soccer, the star is Tony Sané. Soccer. To some, this word means everything. The greatest sport? Literally, the difference between life and death. During World Cup, held this year in Japan and South Korea, countries all over the world ceased to function, their citizens enthralled with who would take home the international prize. This May, the U.S. soccer team made its best showing at the World Cup in decades, forging their way to the quarterfinals. GTV caught up with professional soccer player Tony Sané, receiving an award for his contribution to America's success. First of all, I would just like to say on behalf of GTV how proud we are of the United States' accomplishment. How does it feel to know that two billion people like across the world are watching you as you play? Well, obviously you're honored that you know you're representing your country and uh, you know that's the main thing. You you know, you get people all across the world to watch, you know, people representing America. And uh, it's also uh, you know an honor and uh, it's special to know what you do so many people are interested in. Can you describe the difference of uh, the South Korean fans compared to the United States fans back in 94? Well, you know, if you're in uh, in Korea, no matter where you were, you definitely knew that the World Cup was going on. Uh, you know, they had, at times, you know, a million, two million people in the streets, uh, you know, and 80% of them had the same red T-shirt on, uh, just cheering for Korea. Also, you know, everything in that community, and uh, Korea, Seoul is the uh, second biggest city in the world, but, uh, you know, everything in Seoul had something to do with the World Cup. So, you know, they were living it and it was part of it and it was in their society. Growing up in, uh, in St. Paul, what made you choose a sport that was less, less popular like soccer over something like hockey, which in St. Paul is obviously very big? Yeah, in uh, Minnesota, hockey's huge, but, uh, you know, I grew up playing uh, soccer and basketball, and I ran track and played tennis, and I did all those sports all through high school, but I really always had a passion for soccer, and uh, all my friends seemed to have the same passion, so uh, we just kept playing it, playing it, and playing it, and, uh, you know, if you play it, you, you know, you learn the love for the game, and you would never stop, and I had opportunities to keep on going, and so I did. What would you recommend for... Um for today's youth, what would be your advice for people getting into soccer or any sport that might be less popular? What would you say to them? Yeah, I mean, uh, you got to do what you love, you know, and you got to have fun doing it. You know, kids, you got to you got to love yourself and you got to you know, respect yourself enough to uh, to find you know what you like to do and do that. Even though soccer cannot yet be called a commercially successful sport, its popularity among youth is undeniable. Evidenced by David Henning and Sam Suchovic, both 18 of the Milwaukee Rampage. 
Hi, I'm David Henning, and I play uh, left back and left midfield for the Milwaukee Rampage, and I go to Brookfield East. Hi, I'm Sam Sucevic. I play midfield for the Milwaukee Rampage. I graduate from Sussex Hamilton. What's it like to be so young and on such a high level of team? It's really a great experience, and um, I've enjoyed it a lot, and I've always taken soccer really seriously. Sometimes there's a little pressure, but once you get to, used to it, we're in our second season and having a good time. It's been unbelievable. The last two years, it's been just great. Best time of my life. Uh, meeting older guys, starting to see how everything works, and it's just, it's great. You're learning so much every day. You learn something new. Do you ever feel prejudiced against because you're younger? Well, being the youngest person on the team, uh, I've been told that I will never graduate from the status of rookie. I, uh, I have the duty of carrying all the balls to every practice, uh, staying after, picking up everything. So I have like two jobs, playing and like equipment manager. However Americans act towards the United States of success, one thing is definitely clear, the popularity of U.S. soccer can only grow. I can't wait to see how the United States fares in the 2006 World Cup in Germany. You can find out more information by visiting the website below. Stay tuned as we get a first-hand look at the mysterious sport of geocaching. You're watching GTV. Milwaukee Brewers take on the hard-hitting Cincinnati Reds. The Brewers play here tonight at 6 on UPN 24. There's one new television show that has it all. Intrigue, drama, and some of Hollywood's biggest stars. Except in this show, they're not acting. Celebrity Justice, the real-life drama behind the famous faces. The real-life intrigue behind the famous cases. Celebrity Justice, the truth isn't scripted. Weekdays at 2 on UPN 24. He gets no respect. My life began the day I met you. Baby, shut up! Now, five times a week, the Hughleys. Some moments change who you are. Some just make your day. But if it happens in your life, it happens on Mori. Experience life every day. Weekdays at 11 on UPN 24. Respect! He can't get it from his family. Can't you be a little more supportive right now? Oh, not wanting eggs vinegar. Well, I wanted a vasectomy, and that didn't work out either. Now it's happening five times a week. The Hughley. Premier September 16th on UPN 24. <laughs> Two half sisters under one roof. Lots of baggage. We don't even know each other. I'm cool with that. Half and half. Premier September 23rd on UPN 24. Welcome back to GTV. Multiple satellites orbiting the Earth, constantly sending back detailed information to thousands of receivers on Earth. Also that people can find yo-yos and slide whistles hidden in the woods. If you think this sounds pointless, wait till you see the drama involved in going on a geocache. This funny looking word is actually pronounced geocaching and it's something you've probably never heard of. Across the US and in other countries, people have gone into woods, parks and cities and hidden boxes filled with assorted treasures. Once they posted its precise location on the internet, Anyone with a handheld global positioning system or GPS can try and find it. We thought we'd get the lowdown on it. The global positioning system has been around for years, but its information has not always been available to the public. On May 1st, 2000, the Clinton administration removed the select availability from the GPS signal, allowing anyone with a GPS to know or find any location on Earth. A container of goodies was hidden just outside of Portland, Oregon, and its location was posted on the internet. Since then, 
thousands of others have created their own prize bins and variations of the game. Now we'll track some teens seeking an offset cash, one of the variations of geocaching. I'm Kyle Thine. And I'm Mike Thine. And we're going on our first geocache. Within a mile from here, the cache, or prize bin, is hidden. But for this cache, three other locations must first be visited. The latitude and longitude coordinates to the next clue are written on this ring. After entering the point into the GPS, a route from their current location to the next clue will be shown. Can't wait to find the extra cache. I think it was awesome. Good to be outdoors. Can't wait to find it either. I want to see what's in it. Oh, oh, oh we're blind. <laughs> Why don't we take that? Take the thing that's there. Huh. <laughs> gonna go that way. Wow. It's kind of cool. It's like an old like snow. We just sat right there, and I just saw it. Right. We walked up there. Next, Fun. Coordinates: <laughs> forty-three, eleven, one fifty-seven north. We're like one tenth of a mile. We only have one more clue to go, and then we find our prize, which is gonna be the best part. So we're on the fifty. Found it. All right, get it. It's in there snug. There we go. All right. Got our log book. Got all these little goodies to choose from. Ooh, and a camera. Camera to take a picture of yourself with. I am taking a Chad Brock country music CD and a little Dodge soccer balls. We're gonna leave them a pen and some batteries. Had fun on the hike, a beautiful area full of wildlife. Lots of fun, thanks. Mike and Kyle, fine. Good to be outdoors. A lot of nice scenery, like the woods. A great time, a lot of fun. Kind of difficult at some points, because some people aren't very good, but it was good overall. Let's go. Let's go. Put it back. This cache is one of the 22,897 currently hidden throughout the world. With over 75% of these hidden in the U.S., one might be closer to your home than you think. If you think you'd like to try geocaching, visit the website below to find out how to get started or to find a cache near you. Up next, teens express themselves through garage band music and dramatic reading of poetry. Let's move. It's the best time of the day. I'm running! We're free! It's the place for fun and games. This is it, recess time. Return to your games and fun. Yeah! Oh boy. It's a chance to go a little crazy. Get up! <laughs> this is better than swapping desserts. Okay, people, show's over. It's recess. Weekdays at 8 on UPN 24. Thanks for staying with us. Today in Express Yourself, the band Brown Study gives us a sample of their authentic music. Also, the soon-to-be-famous Nora shares a heartfelt interpretation of the JFK assassination. Hi, we're Brown Study. My name's Steve Heisey, I'm 18, and I play guitar. Hi, my name's Joe Shills, I'm 18 years old, and I play drums. I'm Jordan Soika, I'm 18, and I'm the lead vocals. My name's Ben Habonic, I'm 18, and I play the bass guitar. We've been a band for almost two years. We play a few covers and shows, but mostly, like, our songs are all our own. Hi, we're Brown well, Study. We're gonna play our song Chasing the Moon for you now.
the songs I write, I put everything into them, and they are my babies, pretty much. For me, it's kind of two things. First of all, it's kind of a venting. You can let off <clears throat> anger and just kind of run around on stage, and at the same time, you can kind of express yourself and your emotions in a creative way. I just like music. It's fun for me. My name is Nora Pylock, and I am 16 years old. Well, I am kind of a ham. I love to be the center of attention. I can express all my feelings through acting. If I'm having a bad day, I can just go up on stage and let it all loose. I love how you can be different characters and experience different things that you normally wouldn't experience in your everyday life. I just want to act because it's my passion and my love. I will be performing a cutting of the piece Six White Horses by Candy Gear. Six white horses came today to take my daddy far away. Mommy says I must be good and stand as big as daddy would. Cause daddy is my special friend. He always comes back soon again. But mommy says I must be still. I'm a big boy now and so I will. Oh, I hear some drums, they're awful loud. My mommy's sad. And so is the crowd. And everybody's dressed in black. But Daddy soon will hurry back. Two men are talking. I can see. They said they're very proud of me. They said my daddy's in that box. The black one. The six gold lock. I have on a big boy suit. And now it's my turn to salute. They're going to stop and then just leave. But in that box, how will he breathe? I want to hear him laugh and say, John, John, come here so we can play. I don't see Daddy anywhere. I want to cry and I don't care. He's in the ground. He cannot be. He should be right here holding me. But Mommy says I must be good. So I'll just stand as Daddy would. If you would like to be featured and express yourself, call 414-374-3511. Entrometía, ve busca tu propio gambo. Vete, vete. Mija, ¿qué te pasa? Ve, busca tu propio gambo. So, what's the hype about Gumbo Magazine? For one, we have a sexy, sexy Papi Chulo, Hayden Christensen, who spoke with Gumbo about his role in the movie Star Wars, Attack of the Clones. Find out which rumors of this actor's was true. And on Top Story, written by Jacqueline, we go to a much serious note and talk about teen prostitution. Lastly, we spoke to Jesse Plemons, who co-starred with Bow Wow in the movie Like Mike. The up-and-coming actor spoke with Gumbo about his experience as a young actor and reveals what his plans are for the future. So remember, get your own Gumbo. Gay! Well, that's it for our first episode of Season 2. I'm Teddy. And I'm Lynn. And now let's meet the rest of the crew. Hi, I'm Nadia. <laughs> I'm Andrew. Hi, I'm Denise. What's up? I'm Ishmael. Hi, I'm authoring. GTV. It's not just seen on TV, it's teens making TV. It's time for We're Gumbo. serving it up for some of the best of our crew. Giving teens what they need in the name it's of a self. Taking Gumbo. heed to needs from teens who read, fulfilling our dream with journalistic it's speed. Gumbo. 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 to the 